Nearly six months after Hurricane Michael slammed into the Florida panhandle, many people living there are still trying to put their lives back together. The Category 4 storm made landfall last October, killing 43 people. It caused more than $6 billion of damage. Manuel Bajorquez is in Panama City, Florida, with a look at the painstaking recovery effort. Manuel, good morning. Good morning. Just take a look around and you can see parts of the panhandle look like the hurricane hit just yesterday. Some have not been able to start the cleanup. Others have simply left and with an estimated 40,000 homes either damaged or destroyed. The most critical need here is housing. This is our sauteed onions. Shelly Summers isn't just cooking for her family. Good stuff, man. <laughs> she feeds 17 men, women, and children who live here, a tent city in her backyard for those who have nowhere else to go. What did you feel when you saw that there were people that did not have even a place to set up a tent? They lost their homes and they needed a sense of security and a sense of belonging. That was the biggest thing for me. I mean, she opened up her home to total, total strangers. The hurricane left Lori Hogan and her husband Gino homeless. They were staying in a hotel for a little while, but when the money finally ran out, they found a new shelter in Summer's backyard. Those are tears of yeah, gratitude. It's tears of gratitude, happy. We don't know where we'd be if, if, it, if, wasn't for if it wasn't for them. 20 miles away at Springfield Community Church, hundreds of families still show up for food boxes. Grateful, but many are frustrated by the pace of recovery. Pretty much sickening. You know, it's, it's just sickening how they're putting things first before they put people first. Pastor Eddie Pitts, who is displaced himself, organized these volunteers who serve some 12 to 1400 people every week. There's still a need here and in their eyes, you talk to them, in their eyes, they have been forgotten. And they will tell you that. Government assistance has arrived. FEMA says nearly $140 million has been approved, the majority of it to be spent on housing for more than 20,000 people, including 820 families in temporary government housing. Like Lyman Wilson and Callie Holloman's family. We're doing good, Lexi. We're here now. <laughs> they moved into temporary FEMA trailers this week. They want to have their own apartment, but rents have skyrocketed. They say the price of the sort of apartment they had before the storm has nearly tripled. It's impossible. Tough. Yeah. That's tough. Just because because uh, some of the lot of homes are still damaged. Panama City's mayor says there's little the city can do to control rents. I understand we had 2,700 units that were that were destroyed or are not able to be lived in. Less supply price goes up. Driving around, the scars of Hurricane Michael are everywhere, especially in Mexico Beach, where it made landfall. That's where we found Bella and Jack Sebastian, sitting among the demolition crews and abandoned slabs. They are living in a FEMA trailer on the spot where their three-story beachside retirement home was ripped apart by Michael. But they're not giving up on their dream, in a place where the natural beauty help sustain them. This is where you will That's be. That's where this I want to stay. It doesn't matter if it's in a car, in, in a van, in a tent, in a trailer, in a house. It doesn't matter. That's never been an option for us. Mexico Beach is home. And unless the federal government extends the disaster declaration here, FEMA housing will run out at the end of April next year. But the Sebastians say, like so many others, rebuilding their home will take considerably longer. David? Manny, I look at that backdrop behind you. You know, we, we, we owe those people a faster response. Yeah. By the way, that looks like the storm hit last week. Right. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Backdrop, right? It's unbelievable. We're really glad you're there, Manny. Thank you.